Three, two, one, go. Good morning, guys. Okay, so this is what we wanted to do with you guys this morning. We wanted to show you around. Um, I haven't looked, Joe hasn't looked. We like to go around the garden and experience what happened overnight because so many things happen. And so I'm excited. I wanna show you firsthand what we haven't seen yet. So let's go. Right now is a good time to start your winter um, vegetables, maybe your pumpkins or your squash, so they'll be ready for Thanksgiving. It takes about 100 to 120 days for our pumpkin squash to um, fully ripen, so that's about four months from now, and that'll bring you around Thanksgiving. Um, maybe you can get it done by uh, Halloween. Um, so I want a pumpkin and some squash. So I got my squash here. He popped up right away. This squash was from a squash we ate. And I harvested the seeds. I dried them out for one night and put them with paper towels. Every time I plant it, it pops up in two days. I also planted a watermelon. It's a little warm, but I want one for the holidays. Um, and uh, it hasn't popped up yet. And funny thing is, is this seed was in a package. So he's taking a while. It might be too hot as well, so don't quote me on that. This pumpkin was in a package. He hasn't popped up yet either. It might be too warm, like I said. I don't like to use a cover. So um, here's my cantaloupe right here. If you look, he is actually doing some cantaloupe things here. It's pretty cool. Keep him in his little sock. My hat's in my so this little sock I made, I got myself some stockings that I had, some little knee-high stockings, and I cut them, and I just twist-tied them up, made a little hammock for this guy so he doesn't touch the ground. Um, a lot of people tell me that when their fruit touch the ground, bugs will come up and eat them from the bottom. Now this is a stunted plant. Um, not thinking that this fruit will get all the way to its normal size. As you can see, the leaves are stunted. He's doing his best, but I'm just keeping him because look at him, how could I, how could I not? So I'm hopeful that he was from my March crop when I planted in March and I lost almost everything from this side down. I lost almost everything. I had, I messed up, you know? I planted three pumpkins and three watermelons and six cucumbers and so they got clustered I mean I'm sorry they got cluttered together and it didn't give him any room for growth so that helps with diseases and mildew and all of those things it's big problems so what you have to do is you have to give your plant pumpkins and vines watermelons squash they're gonna make a giant plant it's good to make sure you have like two feet three feet um, for them to grow big, huge leaves because my pumpkin, I don't know if you've seen in my other videos, he started off slow. His leaves ended up getting really big, but still not big enough. And I have this because sometimes they like to grow up. My pumpkins, they don't really like it as much. They, the cantaloupe hated it. I forced him. But the cucumbers, they love to grow. You can still see their little strings they loved growing up the trellis they grew all the way up and i kind of had to force these ones too um, this time i just want to let them do what they want so he has a trellis or he can go wherever this watermelon has a trellis can go wherever same for the pumpkin this is my sunflower um my big old boy right there i've had him and he was planted in march he's amazing i actually thought something was wrong because he had all these heads Someone told me it was because I stressed him out and then I looked it up on the package and no, I didn't stress it out. They're supposed to have these many flowers bloom on the one plant. And I still have more coming, look. It grows all the way down, I love it. So this is the most beautiful sunflower, I love it. He's small, he stunted a little too because I started this whole garden off with so much burlap because I was afraid that I was going to kill them 
and so I had them completely covered. They couldn't breathe, they didn't get enough sun, and they were small, they weren't producing. So we took the covers off and everything did so much better. Even this guy. If you go look at one of my first videos, it will show you what I planted, all the cucumbers. I used to have lettuce and herbs down here. And it'll show you how little this guy was. He had four little leaves and he was like dying every day. And I would protect him with some burlap and Joe was like, he's not gonna make it. But now look, he's about to make flowers. Just don't give up. So here's my tomatoes. This side is Roma, I believe. We get, it's Roma or cherry, I'm not sure. But there's four growing right there. And then this side is my giant, oh look, get over here. There's a bee on my sunflower, see him? See the oh, sunflower? Yeah. Yay, yay, happy bee. He's doing his job here, good job. See, that's why I don't like to spray bug sprays. I try not to, only if I have an infestation with um, caterpillars, I spray Captain Jack's or, um, uh, I'll use neem oil if there's aphids, but that not right now. It's too hot right now in the summer, but neem oil works really well. You only need to use it once, you really, and your aphids should be gone. And then the Captain Jacks for caterpillars, I do a light spray, and I don't see them for a long time, so it really works well. Um, so yeah, that bee's getting to work. Hopefully he'll make his way down on my uh, tomatoes because I don't know if you can see, they were having trouble down here because the sun was beating them. And when I took off the burlap, they had to get used to it. And then all these curled leaves, this is wind burn. When we have the bad winds, it totally makes the leaves hard and curled up. And then as you look up, as we get higher, I have a little bit of burlap, burlap up here to protect them because they're a little more delicate. Um, but as you can see where the shade has started, they have all grown up and they're very healthy. And look at all the flowers. You'll have to zoom in here. Do you see all the flowers on this guy? Top, top, top. There's your main flowers. So with a tomato, you're gonna have your giant flowers on the top, see? They have big flowers up top. I have to move this guy, look at them already. So you'll have giant flowers up top, and that's the one that sprinkles down on all your lower flowers, see these? You're gonna have lower flowers, and those are gonna be your tomatoes, the lower. This guy, look. He's growing from all the way over here, all the way here, look, all the way from over here. So he's got little flowers here, little flowers here. So his big tall flowers are gonna pollinate. His tall flowers here are gonna pollinate, but they're all growing together, so they're helping. I don't know if you can see, look, we got a little baby here. So exciting. And if, let me see, I know I have more in there. I saw them yesterday. The grass is hot, it's killing me. Let me look in here a little better. I can find one. So I found one. Oh, look, here's another one. So here's one right there. He's underneath. You gotta get under to see him. But then there's one right there. They're all little babies. So that's so exciting. I thought it was going to be too late and too hot. A lot of people say it's too hot uh, for tomatoes. This is proof that that's not true. I just use Dr. Earth every two weeks. I just sprinkle a little bit. I put coffee grounds all through the week. And that's about it. And they love, they're loving life. And my pride and joy I'm about to show you. Come over here so they can see me walk into the cornfield. <sighs> so this is hot grass. This is amazing. It's only a couple weeks old, okay? You might have saw my videos of me trying to tie them up when it was super windy. Look at these sticks. These are the sticks that I put in there to help them when it was windy. <laughs> and look how much they've grown. This stalk is as big as my arm. I love it. So here's a, here's a little um, a tidbit on corn. Uh, this is gonna be really hard for me to pollinate because it's only a single row. Usually when people grow corn, you have to grow it in a block. So at least two rows or three rows and, it, and make it a big block because of um, pollination. It's really hard to pollinate these, especially by hand. So what happens is when those little hairs come out, you know when you're shucking corn? I know you remember, my mom used to make us shuck the corn. When you shuck corn and you see all those hairs, each hair 
is a piece of corn. So every single little hair is gonna grow a kernel. So you have to pollinate every single piece of hair. So the way to do it with a row like this is when they grow the hairs, I'll start on one side one week and I'll cut some of the hairs off and I'll rub them on all the hairs I can see, as much as I can, right? And then the next day, or the next week, I think, I'll have to read, I don't wanna be mistaken, but it, say, it, it says like a week of pollination. Then you start on the other side and you cut those hairs and you're gonna rub them all the way this way because you want an even pollination. So as you do it, you're gonna go back and forth and you do each one and back and forth and hopefully you get full ears of corn. I see a lot of people, they open their corn, they have three kernels, they're like, why did this happen? Mm -hmm because we didn't plant enough. We didn't plant enough for them to help each other. So now we have to put all the work in. And then these are just a little bucket of flowers. I didn't expect to happen. I just did it for the bees. And these are some uh, marigolds and, is this a, I forget, zinnia? I think that's what it's called, yeah. So yeah. yeah, these are those. I'm just trying to get some uh, some bees. Oh look, there's a cutter bee right there. Did you see him? Did you see him hovering? Look, there he is. Yeah. And so here's my sunflowers. We have a little, we have a visitor. She's been living with us for about a week now. I showed a video last week. This was full of mealybugs. It still has some mealybugs on there, but um, I've been spraying them with like soap and stuff trying to get rid of them the ants are taking them away as they die but um, I believe that my little ladybug is eating them as well so I don't want to poison these plants so that she has nowhere to live I even put little droplets of water right here for her to have something to drink every day she's probably under this leaf I'm gonna lift it up right now to show you real quick because this is where she's been hiding out every day she'll go all around but then she hides here for the Sun let's see if she's still here oh no oh no where lady go let's see she moved somewhere else. There's no way she she ran away from us. She loved it here. That's okay. Maybe she's on another leaf. I found her. Okay, get down here. There she is. I knew she wasn't going anywhere. There's too much food to be eaten. See her? Mm -hmm. You got her good? Yeah. So look at all these bugs up here. See them? See all those mealies? Can you see them on the top? Look. Yeah. She's about to head on down <laughs> and have her some breakfast. So I'm going to probably give her a little drop of water on the bottom leaf. And I'm just going to let her enjoy her food. I don't really want to kill them. Okay, this is a tomato from them. From the big guys over there, I had to take him out. He was taking up too much space. And I thought he was going to die because once I put him in this pot, the wind, look what the wind did to him. From waist down, he's got wind burn. Look at these bumps on his stock. I've never seen that before. Look. Oh, wow. I wonder what that's I wonder right. what that is. We'll have to look it up. If any of you guys know what that is, let me know. Feel Maybe free it was comment, from let us know. heat or what. But then from here up is doing wonderful, right? The whole plant is doing great from here on up. I was fixing it, sorry. As you can see, we got the top flowers blooming so that they can pollinate the bottom flowers down here. See, those will all be tomatoes down here. These tomato plants, by the way, smell absolutely delicious. Yes, they have a very strong smelling plant. I just don't like how this is bent. Okay. And should I water? Can we water real quick? pretty moist we put about 20 holes in it because this is just from Walmart it's not like a planter bucket I found it at Walmart in the picnic area for I think $12 pretty cheap cheaper than shopping at star so um, we put a bunch of holes in it and this is my little flower pot um, I have to water it once a day 
I don't do twice a day because it, it will kill a couple. We've killed off a couple of plants that couldn't make it. It was a little hot, but you don't want to overwater these guys because they get, they will die. You don't want to water on their roots. That's the problem. So when I'm watering over here, I just don't even care. These guys, I don't care. I have nothing growing right here. I just like to wet it. Like I said, I'm trying to keep my little worms alive. I like it nice and wet, so what are you gonna do? I'm sure I'm sure most women would agree. But this is what keeps my garden alive, keeping it wet. That's what keeps me alive, right? Ladies? <laughs> You see this puddle I'm making? Don't be afraid. If you have a really good draining area, this is what they need. It's going to be gone in two seconds. It won't destroy the roots. But, you know, I don't want to give advice and it be wrong and it hurt your plants because everybody is different and everybody's house is different and the way that the sun sits is different. So it's truly an art. You have to find your own way, really. Um, suggestions from me, from friends. I had suggestions from all my gardening friends and my friends from New Hampshire and here in Vegas. And I took all those suggestions and I put them all in at once. And what I did was I destroyed my whole garden because I didn't, mm. I never figured out what was ruining it because I was just doing everything everyone told me to do. So you just figure out what works for you. And I figured out that if I sprinkle Dr. Earth's I use Kellogg's soil, and then if I sprinkle Dr. Earth twice a week, I know it says to do it um, less than that, but I don't put as much as it says. I just sprinkle around every plant twice a week because I water so much, and it washes it away, so it's time released. So if you're sitting here washing it away, and it's going all the way to the end of your um, shelf, and then you don't have any fertilizer here they're suffering so every two weeks I like to sprinkle a little and that's what I've been doing and I like I said I don't use too much bug spray that was one of my biggest mistakes foliar spray uh, you have to know how to use it that was a big mistake of mine I killed everything pretty much with foliar spray so I'll never use that again and it was organic um, so I find water no shade shade is the devil if you go and look at my videos <laughs> if you go to my facebook uh, sexy gardener on facebook or my youtube videos you're going to see that i shaded everything and it was the devil it destroyed everything they have to have sun tomatoes i have a very loose burlap over them to where sun still can get through as you can see there's giant holes in this burlap so they still get sun but it's just a a little more shaded because they're more delicate but everything else is full sun all day long look at that corn all day long it sits in the sun even this baby squash this baby squash ever since he's been born he's in the full sun all day till 5 30 all day so that's why i like to water them around lunchtime because we water at night and then by the morning time they're still a little damp and okay but by this time, around 10, 30, 11, it's so hot that everything is suffering. They're all asking me for help. So once I cool them off at lunch and give them everything they need, they stand right back up again and it helps them make it through the day until the evening watering. Because if I tried to wait until nighttime, they would suffer. And a lot of people, say oh don't water during the day you know I listen to that too my grandmother used to tell me as a kid don't water during the day it's gonna boil the roots it's gonna ruin the plant I disagree I've had some people message me privately and say that is an old wives tale cool off your plants it'll be fine just try not to get the leaves wet because that will burn the leaves as you can see I do have some burnt leaves from sprinkling water on them but it's more important to cool them off. And as you can see, my plants are still alive from it. They love it, actually. They're doing way better.
It's hot, guys. I'm sweating under here. It's been uh, 110 and over this week, and it's, it doesn't plan to go anywhere. Don't forget to fill, fill your potted plants to the top twice a day. Look, I fill them all the way up, just like I like. It's my sexy gardener. These are our lantanas. He's suffering over here. We just planted these. This whole row just got Doesn't planted. Doesn't get any sun, though. Oh. They don't get enough sun. Lantanas, they love the sun. And they can handle the desert heat beautifully. They thrive in it, actually. Um, oleanders and lantanas, they love it. So they will bloom all season for you, as long as you water them, and they need lots of sun. As you can see, these two right here, they're not getting much sun right now because of our big ass tree. <laughs> so we have to get them cut, and once we get them cut, then they'll get a, a nice little ray of sunshine. The more sun, the better, especially the violet lantana. The violet lantana needs sun or there'll be less blooms. Out of all lantanas, the violet needs the most sunshine. My bougainvillea. I'll learn how to say it right one day. <laughs> this is a beautiful, beautiful plant. This is very resilient in the desert as well. It will bloom all summer as long as you care for it, fertilize it trim it back after the blooms all fall off or if your cutter bees take them all because let, let's show them what it looks like when the cutter bee takes. Do we have any cutter bees on the way? Oh look, one right here. So the cutter bees will come and, oh look, all right here. They'll come and take your petals. They love bougainvillea petals. They slow down though. They must be having babies now. Once these are gone and fall off, what you want to do is Trim them way back. Trim everything way, way back. So that they have time to grow out and then the next season, the next growth will be full of flowers. I didn't trim it. The first time I brought it home, the whole thing was full of flowers. I never trimmed it. And it took about two weeks for it to grow out and grow more flowers. But as you can see, they're only on the tips. They're not all over the whole bush like when I bought it. So you have to trim them all the way back and then they grow new, um, new branches and then full of flowers. Okay, and then <laughs> this is a creeping rose succulent. And it blooms a lot. I just think I need to give it a haircut. They like to hang. I might put it in a hanging pot and let it, you know, hang down. I'm not sure yet. This is my Hawaiian tea. I love this plant mainly because I got it for eight dollars <laughs> and it's so cute and beautiful people it was dead when I bought it it was looked all like this right here all that and so since we brought it home we fertilize it water it twice a day look at all this new growth beautiful right and then my hibiscus we've never had a problem very happy something ate this hibiscus right here look a moth or something caterpillar the heat closes these ones fast because i have them in the front and they only get morning sun but then in the evening they get a little bit of evening sun which beats them up so when you wake up in the morning you're gonna have your flowers that are opening and your flowers that were open the night the day before you get one day of blooms with hibiscus especially in vegas and so the way to get more blooms coming faster is as soon as you see the plant is closed and done for you go to that line right there and it clips right off so 
If you don't do that, it'll fall off on its own. It just takes a long time for it to rot. Cause see the flower falls off, but this stays on forever. So it, oops, sorry. It takes a long time for it to rot off. And so the plant is still focusing on keeping that flower going when it, it's a dead flower, it's a, it's a spent flower. So I like to take them off right away and that sends a signal down saying, hey, that flower fell off and died. Let's shout out a new bloom. See, a new bulb. So you got little baby bulbs coming out. Every time you clip one off, you'll have new bulbs coming out. I like to take off yellow and, and crappy leaves. And then every day we give her a little spin just to make sure that the sun doesn't beat it up. I'm just trying to hide this jasmine right now. I'm trying to hide her behind the hibiscus because I know she's stressed. My neighbors gave her to me. They dug her up from the ground, put her in this pot. She's so stressed. She's already dropping a seed pod. I've had people tell me they've had their jasmine for years and years and years, like up to five years, and still never seen a seed pod. So she's so stressed. She uh, is afraid to die. She wants to make sure her DNA, you know, lasts. But we're not going to let her die. This is a little cherry tree. So this seed I got from the grocery store, and I ate that cherry and I planted it. So we'll see what happens. This grapefruit I bought at the nursery, he was really small. I haven't planted him because it's too hot. We've gotta wait to plant citrus trees until it's cool winter time. These are just clearance plants that I bought. They were all dead, brought them back to life. I like to, I like to buy plants that are, are doing sad so I can make them happy. Now the best part over here, our new hibiscus, y'all. And take a look at my aloes. I just trimmed every one of my aloes. I took all the babies off and added some more soil. They were giant before. I don't know if you've seen my videos. They all had tons of babies. So I took them all off. I got rid of them, gave them away. Is that a bee on my hat? Look. Uh, no, definitely not. What was it? Oh my gosh, that's weird. A stink bug or a squash yeah, bug? Yeah, it's a squash bug. Yeah, we'll squash that bug then. Oh my gosh, look at all the blooms, babe. Okay, so these were two already here. See, so the plant is still focusing. Even if this comes off, this is still going. Plant is like, yep, you're still alive. Take him off. Right at that, at that line. Right at the line. It comes off so simple. See that line? Stick your finger in it, look. Oop, no damage. Look, we got one for tomorrow. Hey, baby. Hey, baby. These we planted last week. Look, another one. I use the Dr. Earth's Flower Girl for all my flowers, and it's amazing. I can't say it enough. My other aloes, looking good. They're getting a little sunburnt on the tips, but that happens to them every summer, but they, they come back. They, they'll be fine. This is my little mini rose bush. Um, usually the flowers are bright pink, but they've turned a little white, which I don't mind. It's cool. It makes me think I have white and pink roses. It's really, really cute. And I think I gotta take this guy off. See, he's a little it's floppy. floppy. Yeah. Yeah. And look, look at the babies. Beautiful. Hold still for a second. Hold this one. Yeah. Look, he only had a little leaf because they're so not ready. They're still babies. They're still a baby. But we forced the blooming with the with the fertilizer. Because mm -hmm. look, boom, 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 boom. <gasps> Tomorrow we're gonna have so many. Wait, we're gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight tomorrow. Nine. Oh my gosh. If we have nine hibiscus, the most I've had is seven. And that was on the other tree. And this was planted last week. It didn't go any through any stress. Remember the hibiscus tree? It stressed a little yeah. and the leaves turned yellow and yeah. everything. We did it perfect. I cannot believe it. I'm gonna, I might have seven blooms tomorrow on this plant. That is incredible. Come on around. All around, look at all the blooms. See them? Mm -hmm. Look, look, look. I can't, I'm so excited. That is amazing. That is gonna be so beautiful tomorrow. <laughs> and let's go see. My neighbor gave me these agaves. She had them dug up in her yard and she's gonna get rid of them, so I said, hey. And these we planted. Let's 
say what? A month or two ago? He's about two months ago. Okay, probably two months ago. We planted this guy probably two and a half months ago. Right? Yeah. And he was so tiny. He's a little, uh, what's it called? A, um, a knockout rose tree. This is a single knockout, so you only get the five petals. It's too hot for him to bloom, right? Yeah. Well, they already bloomed, and you can see that the cutter bees love this plant. Yeah. Cutter bee, cutter bee. So cutter bees don't destroy your plant. If you have this, do not give your plant bug food or anything. This means your plant is so healthy, it doesn't have bugs, because cutter bees use these leaves to make nests. This is where their babies go. So they only go from the healthiest plants around to build it. But they don't suck the sap, so it doesn't damage your plant. So, cutter bees are good. Okay, people? They don't hurt anything. It's a compliment to have a cutter bee on your plant. So, we're happy with it, but it still kind of aggravates me because every day my plant is chewed up. But I have lots of little blooms. The sun hits from this side, so all my blooms are really on this side. That's the only thing that stinks about not being able to turn it. But I have blooms over here, too. Look, one, 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 one. We're about to have lots of flowers on him, too. And he's bloomed probably five times because every two weeks I give him that uh, flower girl. I give all of them. And every time they are blooming like crazy. It just brings on the bloom. Keep going. I'm going to water my garden, the rest of my garden. And I hope you guys enjoy this video this morning uh, you get to see what we do every morning and every night and it definitely takes a lot of time it's probably a good hour before I uh, am finished watering and let alone all the pruning and, and going around and making sure everything is okay you know so I hope you guys enjoyed our video and until next time Bye-bye.